Hey, thanks for coming back to the channel. In this week's video, we're gonna take a quick look at the Rat Sound XLR Sniffer Sender, a tool you've probably already heard of, but in my last two weeks of carrying it on jobs regularly, I've been quite surprised at how many people weren't already hip to it. The Sniffer Sender has been around for about seven years now, designed and introduced by Dave Rat of Rat Sound back in 2010. If you don't know who Dave is, check out the link below to his website and YouTube channel. You definitely have to check him out. It's an interesting tool, and as somebody who doesn't normally carry a cable tester in my everyday kit, I've found this to be surprisingly useful. Now let's get this out of the way up front. I am aware of the other often cheaper cable testers that are out there on the market. Uh, I used to carry a cable tester. I used to carry the Whirlwind Tester model cable tester in my bag for a number of years. And before that, years ago, I used to work in retail uh, at a small store and we sold tons of cable testers, including a lot of the ones that are still on the market today. So I do know that they exist. This is about something a little different though. The sniffer sender is powered by a cheap and readily available A23. Uh, it's a 12 volt battery typically used in car alarms, and you can find these at any convenience store, any one of those end cap battery stations. They're usually like a buck uh, or two for a set of two of them. This takes one A23, big thumbs up there. And according to the website, it'll last for months or even years of regular use. It was designed so that it doesn't uh, turn on or kill the battery unless it is connected to the other end. Ratsound also points out on their website that a key feature of the patent pending design is its ability to detect a short between pin two and three while still using phantom power as the test source, along with the ability to test every other possible fault that could stop a microphone working without needing the sender or power end of the unit. You can power this unit off of phantom power and it will still function just as normal. This means that the sniffer or the business end of the unit is all you need most of the time. If you're an A2 or you're working on stage or doing patch snakes, this is all you need in your pocket. You don't even need the sender. If you've got intercom or uh, a way to contact the engineer in front of house to turn phantom power on the channels, you can use this and this is all you need to find faults. I eventually stopped carrying the Whirlwind cable tester and took it out of my bag simply because I wasn't using it enough. It was a great unit and it definitely has its place, but taking it on every single gig with me just wasn't worth it. In recent years, I've been making a real effort to thin out what I take in my bag on every single job. Uh, with current weight restrictions on airlines and just the general pain in the ass it is to carry around a really heavy bag all the time, a tool really needs to get used pretty regularly now for me to consider putting it in my bag every day. So how did this tester earn a spot in my bag and honestly, in my pocket on every gig recently? The number one reason is the simplicity. That's right, the distinct lack of features on this tester is what makes it the one that I actually have on me uh, when I really need it. It's not buried in my Pelican case or my gig bag. Uh, it's not sitting in front of house in my bag when I'm up on stage trying to find out where a cable went bad. This tester's in my pocket. Maybe some of you will remember a time in your life when you got your first mini mag light. Uh, now I've had lots of flashlights over the years. I've had LED flashlights, I've had ones with different color LEDs, uh, different strobing patterns, SOS messages, uh, all sorts of different features and pretty much anything you could think to cram into a flashlight I've tried over the years from different manufacturers. But that original mini mag light, the simplicity of it, the feel of reliability in the design, uh, the incredibly simple and intuitive operation that only takes one hand to use, simple features like being able to put in gobos or attach a lanyard. These are all just really simple design choices that make you feel like the person who designed this actually uses a flashlight every day. It makes you feel like the person who designed this understood the fundamentals of what you need in a flashlight when you actually need one. It's that approach to the design that's the reason that I still have one of these in my bag when all my other flashlights that I've tried have come and gone over the years. And it's that type of simplicity in design and understanding what you actually need when you need a cable tester that Dave Ratt was so successfully able to capture in the sniffer sender. And this is also what I felt is lacking with all the other cable testers I've ever owned. Is it helpful to carry a tester that can test every possible type of cable you'll ever come across? Maybe, 
but only if you use it. If it's so bulky that you can't carry it in a pocket or on your person easily, you probably won't have it on you when you actually need it. If it takes a nine volt battery, in my experience, when you do go to use it, it'll probably be dead and you might not have nowadays another nine volt on you. If it has every possible connector you could ever come across, that might be a great cable tester to keep in a workbox or to keep uh, on a test bench or in the workshop for deep diagnosis. But on a job, what I've found really works for me, what I found that I actually use and what is really helpful is a tester that I have on me that tests the cable and the connection that we use most commonly in this business, and that's the XLR connector. So a typical scenario would be where you might have a bad channel on stage. So what I would do is supply phantom power to that channel from the console and then go to the stage snake and plug in this tester. If it tests good there, you can then plug your mic cable back in and move up the signal chain towards the microphone, uh, testing along the way. So you test your sub snake. If that's good, you move on to your mic cable. And if that's good, that means your microphone is bad. But this is a tool that fits so well into your normal diagnostic process that I'm starting to really wonder why it took me so long to start carrying one. I've set up a quick test jig here to show some examples of what certain failure modes look like. Uh, I've had a few of these screw terminal XLRs laying around for a number of years now and finally found a good use for them. You can take a moment now while I whip this up to take this test jig completely out of context. Get yourself super angry about my non-mill spec soldering job here and head down to the comments below and uh, then tell everybody how brilliant you are uh, for suggesting the NASA soldering tutorial in every fucking YouTube video you see a soldering iron in. Just a friendly reminder, not every soldering job you ever do has to be able to survive a trip to outer space. Sometimes you just need to get something working and that's okay. Well, the one I'm showing here is the original model. The new model has been slightly modified to get rid of this power switch. It's now a twist on to power on uh, feature. And they've added some letters on the LED lights here on the end, just to make it a little easier, depending on which way you're looking at it, to know if you've got pin one, two, or three. But otherwise, the design has stayed the same and it is as simple as ever and very, very useful. So that's it for now. This was just a quick look at a really awesome tool that I wish I had purchased a long time ago when Dave Rat first streamed it up. Uh, they sell these in the XLR, they sell them in a DMX version, they sell them uh, in an NL4 version, a little bit bigger for doing your speak on cables and a quarter inch version uh, for testing those TRS and quarter inch cables, uh, depending on your specific needs. You can click on the links below to find out where to purchase those. This one goes for around $55, places now. I've seen them as low as 45, but right now 55 is right about where they are. And um, I know I'm going to order one of the newer versions soon so I can keep one in each of my gig bags and be sure I don't go on a gig without it again. Thanks for watching. Be sure to like and subscribe if you enjoyed this video. And if you want to help me make more of these videos, you can follow the affiliate links in the description below or give your support directly over on Patreon, which is also linked below. Thanks as always to the folks who already help support the channel through those links or through Patreon. Uh, without you, these videos wouldn't be as possible. Uh, they certainly wouldn't be as regular and I appreciate it more than I can tell you. That's it for now. See you next time.